Hey, what's up, YouTube? This is my first video in a long time, actually, I think. Um, just showing this thing off here. It's a Sony SCD... Uh, Seaberg SCD-1 jukebox. I had it open because I was cleaning it out, so I figured I'd get a video of it while it's open. There's the player unit in there. Holds 60 CDs. It's a big player. There's all the uh, power supply and the CPU board and everything. It's got two woofers in the uh, bottom. Tweeters up there. Then your mids on each door. I got it for 100, uh, 150 bucks from a restaurant that was abandoned for four almost five years it just sat in there and the owner told me that it needed work so i figured well for the money you know 150 bucks if i can't get it working i could probably either part it out and make my money back or just sell it as is and make my money back <clears throat> when i got it or when i went there i guess they plugged it in and it started playing so when i got there i heard music playing which surprised me because i didn't even expect it to play to be honest uh, the left channel was out, uh, and this display right here was flicking on and off and showing a bunch of garbage, basically. So, I immediately bought it, because, I mean, it was playing when I got there. Uh, got it home, redid the solder on the back of these boards. That fixed the flicking lines. Won't focus on that very clearly, but it looks good. It's not flicking, showing garbage anymore. Um, and I wired, basically jumped the output of the right channel to the left channel, and that got the left side working. Something, Something's going on with the amplifier board. I haven't had time to really dig into it yet. Um, but I did source another amplifier for 50 bucks. I might just end up buying that and putting it in it. But yeah, this is it. Uh, this was the SCD1 was the very first CD jukebox ever made by any company. So that's some cool trivia there for you. It has these things, which I'm not a huge fan of for changing through the CD artwork. It's not a. It's kind of clumsy and a little bit harder to use than the push button it's a lot harder to use than the push buttons but it works and the cool thing is about that you can have two different people looking you know one person on each end looking at the cds at the same time so that's kind of cool i could see why they'd want to do that that's something you can't do with the any of the push button electronic things and here you can see it see it in action it's moving It was skipping a lot when I got it, and I was thinking maybe it was the brand of CD, so I tried changing the CDs and everything else, and it was weird because it seemed like some CDs would play and some wouldn't, even though they both were the same brand and they were in the same condition, there was really no logical explanation, so I ran the uh, disc cleaner with the brushes on it, I ran that through, and that got it really maybe a little bit better but it was still skipping so i'm thinking well it's not the lens that needs clean because i've done that a couple times actually and still doing it well i read online that um people take a q-tip with some solution i'm basically using this lens cleaner came with the the disc looks like isopropyl alcohol probably um and a q-tip and you just carefully brush that on the lens. And once I did that, it immediately started playing almost every CD 100%. I have, there's one or two that skip and they're actually scratched. So that's why they skip. The cool thing about the CD unit, this jukebox came out, out in 1986. And this CD player, you can probably tell most of those CDs in there are burnt CDs. And it'll play, it plays burnt CDs no problem. 
So that's really cool. Cause I still had, most of these CDs are from my old jukebox that I had my all, my old row Eagle wall mount jukebox. So most of them came out of that. And of course I changed some stuff up, burnt some different stuff. I got a couple Metallicas in there. I got some, all the Slipknots. Um, Best of Judas Priest, Best of Kiss, Iron Maiden, ACDC. The usual stuff you'd find in a jukebox, really. A lot of thrash stuff, too. We get towards some more heavy stuff. Lamb of God, Death, Exodus, that kind of stuff. And for friends that come over that might not like my type of music, I have some Bachman Turner, Merle Haggard, which I don't even listen to country, but it's in there. Some Doobie Brothers. I have a couple of soundtracks. I have the Christine soundtrack, um, Maximum Overdrive soundtrack, which is basically ACDC, Who Made Who, Demon Knight, got some Megadeth in here, a couple of Megadeth albums, my favorite ones, by the way, uh, Cannibal Corpse, a bunch of Rob Zombie stuff. So yeah, this is it. Oh, when I got it, um, one of these buttons, I think the five button was stuck. You couldn't push it, so I pulled this whole thing off and cleaned it. That got that working. The bill acceptor does work. There's a setting for free play. That's what the FP stands for on the thing there. It means it's in free play. If you put it in uh, pay to play, I think it scrolls insert coins or a dollar, which interestingly enough, there's no coin slot. There's a block off plate where there'd be one, but just push that in, put your dollar in, push it in, and it actually dispenses down the side here into that box. So, I'm pretty happy with it for 150 bucks. I wanted to get another jukebox for the arcade. Um, wasn't, didn't really want to spend a whole lot of money. I was looking at the Pioneer jukebox that holds, I think, 30 CDs or 35 or some, some weird number. Um, it has really good sound to it. it gets loud but they're like 300 bucks and they they hold half of what this does i was i didn't even really want to get this one because it only held 60 and the one i had before held 100 so it's like there's 40 cds i can't put in and i i will admit it was a little bit harder picking out the ones for in here i had to pick and choose a little bit more than i did with the 100 cd jute that, that one I was just kind of throwing stuff in just to fill it actually so this 60 might be a good a good number for me I'm, I'm happy with it has good audio here you can watch it put that disc back it's a pretty cool mechanism from what I've seen this uh, this CD mechanism was the one used by radio stations back in the day I don't know why this is so dusty um, it was used by radio stations actually back in the day. So it's a really good CD mechanism. The only bad thing is there is no replacements out there that I know of. There's people that are looking for that CD mechanism and they can't find it. Um, I found a guy that has a replacement laser for one. He wants like 300 bucks. So they're pretty much, once they're done they're done that's the bad thing about them i know the row cds you can kind of rebuild them somewhat this one once it's done unless you get lucky enough to find a parts one and have the parts in that that you can swap that are good um that's really the only thing you can do but it is a big a big unit it's a floor mount i wanted a floor mount instead of a wall mount this time because it's got the built-in speakers um and they just sound better in my opinion they're the speakers are tuned for the juke and the amps are tuned for the speakers and it's just the wall mounts are too heavy by the way i think I, they're like 200 pounds to put on a wall and then you got to draw all these holes in your wall and then you got to add speakers it's just a pain i'm gonna shut this bottom part here which is gonna require me to put the phone down for a second so i'm gonna pause it here Okay, there it is all shut up it's kind of a awkward looking jukebox i must say 
some people like the, the styling of them, some of them don't. It's kind of got like a V shape to it. I don't know if you can see that. It's got like a V shape to it. Um, it's different, but it kind of grew. It kind of grew on me, to be honest. And it's not as flashy as the wall mount unit I had. It doesn't have all these blinking lights on it and everything else. It actually has no blinking lights. I'll turn the light off. That's it. You got basically the displays up here that light up the lights, the tubes that light up the CD artwork, and then you have one light that lights up the uh, player itself, and that's it. They did come out with one a couple years later, I think, or a year later, that is a little bit more flashy. Has uh, flashing lights, I think, and it has like all these different colors all over it. I actually think I prefer this one better. I think that one's just too, it's too much going on, in my opinion. And I got the black light sitting on it, just to kind of give a little effect to the room, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, oh yeah, it came with a remote. And the cool thing about this is it runs on radio frequencies. It's not uh, infrared. So basically I could be outside my house and operate it with this. Um, you got volume up. Volume down is number two. Number three will cancel the track. And number four turns off, uh, what do they call it? They have some kind of, it's kind of like, it just automatically plays stuff repeatedly. Um, background music. They call it background music. So it'll just, like I didn't pick any of these songs. It's just automatically picking a CD and a track. From the collection once that cd's done it automatically picks another one immediately after it doesn't have any pause at all so it's constantly got background music and number four will turn that on or off if you turn it off it'll just once it's done the cd it's playing it'll just go and sit there and not do anything except for uh, i have it set um a track i guess it's kind of like a track mode every 10 minutes it'll play a random CD and track. So if you had the background music off, I still have the track mode on, so it'll still play music every 10 minutes. But once it plays a song 10 minutes, or within 10 minutes, it'll just stop and then wait 10 minutes and then play another. I'll just show you the inside here again. The CPU board, which I did back up the EEPROM to that, so if anybody needs one, let me know. Um, I'm not quite sure what that is. It's some kind of addition that was added on, but I'm not quite sure what it is. That's for the remote, it looks like. Um, the amplifier is in there. Like I said, there's the power supply. Here's all your operator controls. I don't know why my phone's not focusing. There's your operator control service mode. Audit, popular CD, credit. There you can add more speaker wire or more speakers to it. Got the back of the bill acceptor. You've got your fluorescent tubes in there with the ballast. And this side, pretty much the same as the other. And to get to the CD artwork, just put this up and it pops open. And you can pull these out, change them up, do whatever you need to, replace the light in there. It's something I'm not a huge fan of is the way that they did this. Basically, you have to use the back of the CD jewel case artwork uh, that has the tracks on it. And some albums, I mean like Slipknot, like that's sideways. So you gotta turn your head sideways to be able to really read it, which is kind of a pain. I mean, yeah, you could make up your own thing or whatever. And a lot of people aren't gonna recognize the CD, like, that's Iron Maiden, but just a quick glance at the back, you know, you don't know what album that is. It's 
no prayer for the dying, you know, unless you own it or you're a huge fan of it. Like, you can't really just easily flip through these without looking at the little end strips and see, you know, oh, that's Metallica, Ride the Lightning. You, you don't know. Like, most people know the front of the CD uh, artwork, which is why it's good how Road does it, because you can put that front, you know, everything, the front that everybody knows is facing outward, and everybody can see that, and... I know I'm rambling on and probably not making much sense, but I just think it's kind of stupid that you got to put the back of the CD cover artwork on there. I mean, they did, apparently at the time, I guess they did have some kind of um, company that would allow you to use the front artwork, and then it would they would print up kind of like the row it would be like a white sheet of cardboard paper or whatever and it'd have all the track lists in there and it would block half of the front of the artwork but it would allow you to have the front artwork and the track list at the same time uh there was a couple like that in here when i got it um but most of the cds this did come full with cds they were pretty much um bl uh, blue cds there was some polka in it <laughs> there was a lot of country it was at some kind of um chicago restaurant or whatever they it was a bar and grill and restaurant all in one they uh had just different kinds of music in it and i didn't really care for the music that came with it so the only ones that i think i reused were these two aerosmith cds and merle haggard was in it um, but I printed these out because that one is actually the actual artwork from the back. You can tell the ones I printed out have like a glossy sheen to them. And then the actual ones that were in the discs are just not shiny. That's another one that's actual artwork. But yeah, um, it's different the way they did it. I think Roe had a better idea the way they picked theirs. And there's really no um, online CD artwork creator for this which is another downside so like i wanted to uh um photoshop and made that up like that's a custom back that's not an actual disc that's just a compilation i put together made that up and the same for the uh maximum overdrive they actually never released that cd it's just all the songs from the movie with some movie quotes and stuff put in mixed in with it so that's it sucks you kind of got to make your own but if you're okay with photoshop it's not a huge deal i'm i suck with photoshop so it took me forever just to do that like all i did was just snagged an image off google and uh basically text type the tracks into it and then printed it and was done but yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Um, I must have turned it off of background music because I see now it's just, it stopped the CD and it just went into idle mode where it'll just sit there basically. So, I think, you know, for 150 bucks, pretty good deal. It's unique. A lot of people that know about these jukeboxes seem to really love them. So, I've heard a couple people say that this is one of the best CD jukeboxes ever made, that they're, uh, I forget the power output. They, it's got a lot of power output and all this stuff, and it, it does, to me, it sounds pretty good. And I don't know if I'll get any much better sound when I fix that amplifier and get both channels independent, because right now it's basically driving six speakers off of one channel, which is probably bogging down that the, cha the channel too much. So... I'd imagine it would get louder and better once I get that other channel fixed or just swap out the amp or whatever, but <clears throat> it sounds good the way it is, I think, uh, so it can only get better. I'm definitely happy with it, uh, and I think that's pretty much all there is to say about it, so I just wanted to shoot a video to touch base with all my subscribers because I know I haven't really posted anything relevant lately i mean most of the stuff i posted was just little short quick uh videos of my pinball machine or something to try to 
troubleshoot something or get help with something. So I figured I would go ahead and actually shoot a YouTube video with my phone. I'm sorry, it's with my phone. I didn't even bother to charge up my camcorder. So I'm sure it's going to look crappy, but um, still, still wanting to make videos. I have a lot of new things that have happened since I've really stopped recording. Um, so I'll update you along the way. I'm going to make another video here of the arcade and how I have it set up in a minute. So that'll be uploaded along with this one. So anyway, guys, I rambled on long enough. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video.